Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Leonardo and in this video I will show you the process that I followed to rescore the legendary soundtrack of Super Mario Bros. written by Koji Kondo. I will analyze the original tune and show you how to get the tools and the sound palette to create your own 8-bit chiptune music. If you are here, it's because you've always wondered how the sounds and music of the games from the 80s and the 90s were made, and perhaps you would like to do it yourself as well, maybe even professionally now that there is a trend for pixel art and retro looking games. I have also found myself in that place, and that has taken me to study the hardware limitations that some video consoles like the NES, Mega Drive or others had. It turns out it was very challenging for sound designers and composers to adapt their music, their sounds and their art to those systems. And I think it's a very good exercise also for composers and producers nowadays because as you know, limitations always spark creativity. I have divided this video into three main sections. The first of all will be the sound palette. I will show you how the NES sound system works and how you can emulate it. Second, I will do a musical analysis of the overworld theme, the main theme of the legendary Super Mario Bros. And third, we will compose our own music with the tools that we have learned from the video. So, let's go to the first section. Let's learn how the NES sound system works and how you can emulate that in your DAW. With no doubt, the most admirable skills that early video games composer and sound designers had was the creative use they made of the few resources they had at hand. In the case of the NES, they would have only five channels with very specific functions that they had to combine for both music and effects at the same time. This means that the sound of a shot, a jump or a coin should not interrupt the music that was being played on background and at the same time the music should sound full and interesting enough to give the story some drive. The sound system of the NES consisted of five audio channels. Two of them could produce a square wave with a variable duty cycle to be chosen to be the 50%, 25 or 12.5%. Then there was a triangle wave oscillator channel that was intended for bass lines since it was playing always an octave lower than the first two. The fourth channel was a noise generator that could be shaped with the help of an available envelope. And the last one was a differential pulse code modulation sample oscillator that could play sounds like snare and kick drums. You know, kick. The problem with that is that out of those five channels, only three of them could be used for pitched sounds, leaving the remaining two for noises or rhythmic elements of the music. This means that if a sound designer wanted to make a sound such as a jump, then they needed to sacrifice a part of the music to be able to play it. Notice how when Mario jumps, one of the melodic lines stop play. So, if you want to replicate these sounds, you will need a synthesizer that provides you three types of sounds. One is a square wave generator that allows you to choose between 50%, 75% and 12.5% to the cycle. Secondly, you're gonna need a triangle wave generator. And third, you will also need a noise generator. In my case, I've chosen to use Serum since it's my go-to software synth. All I need to do is to load the init patch and select the basic shapes. Here's a 50% due to cycle wave. 75% 12.5% This is a triangle wave And this is how a noise generator sounds like 
For the 8-bit DPCM samples, you could basically use any sound that you would like and then crush it to 8 bits. In my case, I have used Elite Reducer 2, which is a free plugin that you can download here. This would be a original kick drum, 8-bit kick drum, original snare drum, 8-bit snare drum. It seems now we have all our instruments ready to be played, but what kind of music should we write for them? That's for the next section. So, in order to be able to write music like Koji Kondo did for the first Super Mario Bros, I need to get in his mind and think like him. And the best thing to do for that is to analyze his music. You can find the transcription I've made of the overworld theme in the description. I have written it in the style of a jazz lead sheet, meaning that only the melody is actually written, while the rest of the information is condensed in the harmony part. After having transcribed all the harmony, we get this which might result very familiar to all of you. It's a series of plagal and perfect cadences in C major, with the occasional flavor of some modal interchange chords, more specifically from the Aeolian mode. Most probably he used those chords to escape momentarily from the monotony of using all the time the same harmony and give the listener a little bit of spice and color. After all, using C, F and G all the time gets boring eventually despite of what most YouTube music makers of nowadays might think. But wait a second, we have a few more chords in C major. Why did he only use those three and borrowed other chords to build the cadences in the overworld theme? I can't say this for sure, but one thing I've noticed when looking at the harmonic palette that Koji Kondo used is that there is not a single minor chord. My theory is that uh, Shigeru Miyamoto and Koji Kondo had a conversation that went like Hey Koji, I want some music for my new game Super Mario. That's cool, what kind of music do you want? Well, I'm not sure, but definitely something happy and lively, uh, adventurous and mysterious sometimes, but not too dark or too intense, do you know what I mean? Uh, kind of. Any instrumentation or any particular sounds in mind? Oh, anything that comes to mind, but it will be crashed to 8 bits and you can only use 3 voices. Oh, alright, uh, I figured out something. Then one of the few moves Koji could use with those restrictions was the harmony, but in C major there is just 3 major chords, so ah, let's borrow major chords from other modes that we could use as subdominants on tonic function substitutes, yay! With that restriction in mind, a melody finds its way somehow easily some lines, arpeggios, or even some chromatic approach, and we have the ingredients for a happy, jumpy and adventurous melody. I am not saying that anyone could have written this wonderful music, just stating the outcome of my analysis. Finally, the form of this song is A-A-B-B-C-A-A-D-D-C which allows for repetition without tiring the listener too much, since there is always a different ending to the A part. Once again, a top decision from a top composer. It seems now we have everything in place to start writing our own music. Additionally, I also wanted to accept some of the limitations that Koji Kondo had or used. More specifically, there are three ground rules that I would like to stick to. First one, we will only use major chords. Secondly, we will work in C major. And third, we will use a 2-4 meter. For the harmony, we will extend it a little bit more by looking at what chords we can borrow from parallel modes. And for that, I have to give you a mini music theory lesson. In order to find out which chords we could use via modal interchange, we first need to write down all parallel modes from C, which is the root we will be using. Now we'll select only those chords which are major. At a first glance, we can already see that every major chord appears in three different modes. If we take just those chords and put them together, we will have the harmonic palette to be used for the composition of our soundtrack. Now we have everything in place to start writing our music, so let's get back to the writing station. So it's time now to start writing music. I won't explain the reasons why I have chosen 
this specific melody or that specific harmony because that's more an artistic choice but we have tried to narrow down the material that you can use so you can sort of replicate this in a safe and known environment in my case this is the first cadence that i have chosen to work with so it would be c major first then a flat major then b flat major and then back to C major. That is for the A part. Now the melody, I try to write it in such a way that it outlines the chords, meaning that every time a chord changes, the melody goes into one of the chord tones of that harmony. Let me explain. This is the melody that I have written. That's the A part of the melody. Then we have a B part that is kind of a conclusion to that. And then we go to the next section. The next section uses a different modal interchange that has not been used in the original um, Super Mario theme. In this case, we will be borrowing the third degree from C Aeolian, meaning E flat major. It sounds, in the context of C major, it sounds like this. Major chord. Actually, the melody and the harmony, they pivot between those two chords. They are sort of tense, they, they do not really resolve one to each other, but it gives us some ground to play around with. In this case, I wanted to use one of the same uh, melody construction techniques that Koji Kondo used, which was to add some uh, chromatic motion just to add some flavor, to spice, a little bit of spice to the melody, instead of using all the time chord tones, instead of being a slave of the harmony constantly. It goes like this, uh, starting on E flat major. Etc. Now, uh, the next section, uh, we are doing something that I like very much, which is called constant structure. It consists basically of moving a chord in the same structure by one half tone or one whole tone. In my case, I also wanted to add the spice, the tension of what is called the pedal point, which is to keep one note in the bass all the time. That makes the chords sound different. They, it, it, it presents the chords in a different context, if it makes sense. So, since we are in C major, I didn't want to uh, to think too much about uh, which, which pedal I should be using, so it's going to be C. But I am going to use a different modal interchange chords. The first one I'm going to use is D major. That is a borrowed chord from C Lydian. In C Lydian, the second degree is also a major chord, and it's one whole tone away from C, so we would have D major. If we keep a pedal between those two chords, this is how it sounds like. First we have C, and then we have D major. This is a sound I particularly love, used very much by Steve Vai, and it's, it's a very fresh sound, very progressive, very progressive. I, I really like it. Again, we do that a couple of times, or I do that a couple of times, and then, as I said, it was constant structure, and then we're going to use the next closest uh, modal interchange major chord that we have, which is E flat major, which we have used before, and it sounds like this. And I'm going to pair this chord with F major, which is again one whole tone away, and it's the same structure, so it would be... all together.
I like very much this progression because uh, the the fact that we have a pedal point in C gives those chords a different meaning. So, for example, in the case of C, we still have the C, but when we go to D major, it's not a D major anymore. It would be a D7 because it has a C uh, natural. The only thing is that it is inverted. Then when we go to the E flat major, it could also be thought of as a C major. And when we go to F, it is again an F. So it's like a cycle. It starts in C major, goes away a little bit, different modes, different things, comes back to the fourth degree of C major, from which it can resolve plagally to C major. Isn't that beautiful? It's very hard to explain. It's very hard to explain. And that's basically the harmonic content of the piece that I have wrote. Now, if you add some bass, if you add some percussion, if you add some effects, if you split and use different sounds for the different voices that we have, we get I have left the tools and the music sheet that I have created in the description so you can download it and try it yourself. I would love to see how you have made your own 8-bit chiptune music and I would love to see how I have inspired you as well. If you have enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe because that will not only help me grow but also encourage me and motivate me to keep making this kind of content. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below because I will be glad to talk to you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and see you next week. <laughs>